And John uttered the words that echoed down the very last corridor of hell itself and has made hell tremble ever since. He says, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Not all the blood of beasts on Jewish altars slain could give one guilty conscience peace or wash away one stain. But Christ, the heavenly Lamb, took all our sins away. He lifts the door and Samson could never live. He solved a problem that Solomon with all his wisdom could never solve. He led captivity captive. He died and rose again. And he pledged my resurrection in his resurrection. Because he said, if I die and rise, you die and you'll rise again. And if I go to my Father, you'll have a place in heaven with me. And the Holy Ghost came. And the whole area was stirred. I remind you again, friends, that Christianity is not a comparative religion. It's a superlative religion. It doesn't compare with any religion in the world. It contrasts with every other religion in the world. Sure, the Bible is infallible. Otherwise, how do you think it survived so much bad preaching? Oh, brother, let's get back and preach the book. Preach what God says about it, about sin, about redemption, about the Holy Ghost, about His coming, about world tribulation. Why, this is the most exciting book in the whole world. And John preached, and while he was preaching, shooting the arrows of God into the hearts of men and women. Dear old George Whitfield did that one night. He said, I brought my quiver full of arrows, and they tipped with the fire of God, and I'm going to shoot them. And he drew, he said, here is the first arrow, and the arrow is repentance. Here it comes, and the whole audience stepped down. Because, but he got them anyhow. And John was preaching Sunday where by Nicholson said, what did you think to my sermon on hell? He said, it's the most terrifying sermon. Did you feel that God has made a hell for wicked men as well as, as, well as the devil? Did you feel that there are a million ways into hell, a, a million roads in and no road out? That while heaven is eternal life, hell is eternal death? That while heaven is eternal life, hell is eternal darkness? While in heaven there is no mourning or sorrow, in hell it's everlasting mourning. While in heaven they sing the song of Moses, in hell they groan and groan. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we're not saved. Did you feel that it was real? He said, I could almost smell the sulfur. What a way to tell people they've got to repent and turn their back on sin and hate their sin and love their sin. But John did it. And man alive, he disturbed the whole, non-miracle, just the miracle of regeneration, which is, listen, I believe in miracle. I've been in meetings that we have had, and afterwards said, if there are sick, we've been happy to pray. And I've seen God open blind eyes. I've seen people get up out of chairs when they were crippled. I've gone to hospital and prayed for people who are dying of cancer. And one woman I prayed for is healthier than me now, and that was 30 odd years ago when I prayed. I've seen God do that. But I want to tell you the greatest miracle that deity can do is to take an unholy man out of an unholy world and make that unholy man holy and put him back in an unholy world and keep him holy. Amen. That's the redemptive work of God in Christ. There's a little man, some of you read his book, uh, God Smuggler. How many read his the book, God Smuggler? Wonderful, exciting book. I know that, knew that little man, in fact, uh, I gave him that title before after he put the book together. I said, well, you're God Smuggler. And he had been over in China. And he said when he was in Shanghai, he noticed men sitting on the side of the road. They'd been for a haircut. And when their hair was cut, they left a cross in the middle of their heads. Cut it, the patches out, left the, the, the hair standing up in a cross there. And then they had to sit on the sidewalk. And the young communists came past and hoisted all the flat they could and spat on their heads. The church tonight is suffering untold agony. You listen to the sweet little boys over the radio, they'll tell you that, 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 that the Russians are going to come and burn the country up and they're going to put us into hell itself. But you know, you little darlings, you've been so faithful, 
You're so filled with your fasting and your homes are so poor and poverty stricken and you haven't two dimes to your name and you're so stricken and helpless that just out of his great mercy the Lord's going to wrap you out of it so you won't have to suffer one little stroke. All the suffering is for the Christians in Russia and the Christians in China. But no body in America is going to suffer because we're the most faithful people on God's earth. Isn't that lovely? Well, the man who tells you that is a liar. I know a preacher who was in Shanghai, and when he was there, because he had preached, pardon me, he was in Formosa, and because he had preached in Shanghai 20 years before, and found the Chinese people were in Shanghai, were, uh, were in Formosa where they are now. He went in to see them, and he greeted them in his eloquent Chinese, and they ignored him, and he said, but I'm the pastor, I used to teach you in Shanghai, and they ignored him. And he said, now look, this isn't oriental courtesy, what in the world are you doing? I'm your pastor. One man looked up from his busy work and just frowned and said, you're a false prophet. A what? You're a false, a false prophet? Why, I gave you lectures on Mormonism and, 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 and the other isms. I am not a false prophet. We remember when you were our pastor in Shanghai and you had some maps of the world and some wonderful pictures of the Roman Empire and you had a marvelous chart on the Antichrist and you had some more on the dispensations. And you told us that before long we were going to be washing blood here in China. The people were going to kill us down as though we were grass. They were going to rape our women in front of us. They were going to burn our churches and tear our Bibles up and subject us to the most gross humiliation and suffering it was possible to have. But you said, don't you worry about that, because just before that happens, the Lord's going to take all his dear little children out from this. You're not going to suffer. The man said with tears streaming down his face, my wife was dragged out of my arms. And the last time I heard, she'd had three children to the, to, the, to the Russian guards. My daughter was taken away, and my sons and my children were taken away. You told us everything that, uh, that, that was true except one thing. We weren't snatched out of this misery. The Lord didn't spare us. We're living in anguish and suffering. Oh, we're living here now in uh, a little bit of ease and comfort, but there's nothing that can bind up our broken hearts. No money, no creature can. But our wives are gone, our children are gone, our churches are gone, our homes are gone, everything has gone. They're a false prophet, we can't listen to you. You better watch it, preacher, because one day you might go in a concentration camp and some of your church members spit on you for saying the same thing. It's easy to stand up and say excitedly, we glory in tribulation, in infirmity, in necessities, and you go home and have a steak dinner this size and put your feet up and watch the Rams play Sunday afternoon and, and feel that you've really got another star in your crown because, oh, well, very reluctantly, you did go to church Sunday night. Not many people do do that, you know, and that really proves I'm a saint. Sure does. Oh, brother, we're heading for trouble, I'll tell you.